more experiments, this time with alcohol ink. Hey everyone, it's Audrey here, welcome back to another video. Today, today we're going to have a play with some alcohol inks. So I have a few different alcohol inks. So I have Santa Fe Red. I have Calabaza Orange. I have Sun Bright Yellow. I have Lime Green. Rainforest Green. Baja Blue. Passion Purple, which is just beautiful. Not that I'm biased at all. And Pink. Look, Pink. And then I have my large bottle of the Blanco Blanco. And I've done a couple of um, the regular drip Petri dish style things. But I want to do that and test something else. So I have this mould with 15 um, sec sections isn't a word, 15, oh words are hardy wardy, um, 15 holes, they're not holes, um, 15 moulds, I've got this mould with 15 sections, um, <laughs> sorry words are hardy wardy and I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, um, alcohol inks and I want to try a couple of different techniques so one I want to do the regular petri dish and just drop them in and see and then in another one I want to mix the colours with the white before I put it in however if I mix it up and leave it on the side it's going to evaporate because they have alcohol in them so I thought I would have a go at doing a little bit of pre-mixing. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to put on some gloves because I do not want alcohol inks all over my hand, all over my nice gloves, all over everything else. little bottles which come with a lid which has a like a precision top so I put that on and it's going to give me a precision top and then I've got the lid and what I thought I also have a little um, funnel for when I'm going to use the white and what I thought I would do is I would just mix each colour with some white and see how it looks. So let's start off with the Santa Fe Red. So all I'm going to do is, wow, wipe up that mess. I'm guessing this one got knocked over. That's not good. I do not want the ink everywhere. I want it in the blooming bottle, please. That's going to stain anything it touches. Yay, I mean, that's got out some of it. That's really irritating. Okay, so I'm going to do just a little layer at the bottom of each. Okay, and what I'm going to do for now is put the lid on so that it doesn't evaporate. 
then I got my white and I was going to use the funnel but I just thought I'll use my pipette it's much easier so I squeezed say about a quarter of the pipette in with that color and put the precision tip on and gave it a mix and they created some gorgeous colors I could not wait to see how this worked it was really really cool okay so now I have my colors pre-mixed with the white I did do a light blue and a dark blue just by using more of the colour. And I did the same with the purple. I did a light purple and a dark purple. It looks almost black. So they're all mixed with white already. So for some of those um, pieces I'm going to use these and for some I'm going to use the regular ink and drip it in and do the... Um, do the Petri dish style. So, I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my mask, my respirator, my gloves, all of that PPE that you need with resin. I have mixed up my resin and I'm just pouring it into each section of the mould. I did give it a little bit of time in the cup for the bubbles to rise and pop. I then popped them with my torch. And then in the mould I used my heat gun. Uh, don't want to use your torch on a silicon mould because it will burn the resin. Don't use your torch either with alcohol inks because the alcohol is flammable. So the first one, I just did the Petri dish. So I just poured in the ink and then dropped the white over the top. Standard Petri dish um, design. I just wanted to do this at the same time to check that it wasn't, you know, the resin that was different or what have you. So it's all the same resin. So I know that the different results will be because of the way I'm doing it. Um, then I did... I think I did two layers in this one. Yes, yeah, so the first row was one layer. Second row was two layers of ink white, ink white. Just using a variety of different colours, just seeing what would work well together and what didn't. Um, and so, yeah, I did two layers of those, ink and white. And then I started to have a look with the ones that I'd mixed up after I knocked them all over and made a complete mess. Um, <laughs> thankfully, they all had lids on. Um, so yeah, then I put the lids away, or lids on to the actual alcohol inks and started using the, um, no, apparently I didn't. I did another row of alcohol inks. Here we go. Ah, uh, yes, I wanted to do exactly the same colours of alcohol ink and then alcohol ink mixed with, um, in that bottom one. And then I just did the others. And this is really nice because you don't have to add the white on top. So you don't have to worry about not getting the white all over the place because it's pre-mixed in. It's great. I did find that the little uh, the little plastic sleeves did keep falling off the lids, uh, but then I just started to hold them on and it was fine. So I did a couple of them with sort of blues and greens. I thought they might look quite cool colours together. I did a pink and purple. Um, I know I did some pastel sort of rainbows, the yellow, the pale pink, the pale blue, the pink. Um, you know, I think I did red, yellow and orange to try and get like a fiery look. I was just having a play really. Um, I just wanted to see how these would work. And so I know that I did one um, one drop, one layer, there we go, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, and, then, and then a couple of them I did do a second layer to see if that would make any difference. So here we go, that second row in, I'm doing a second layer on them to see if that makes a difference to a single layer. Um, I've done it with the Petri dish, so I might as well do it with the pre-mixed as well. Um, I've got my pink, pink, blue and green down at the bottom there, and then we're going to leave them to cure. So all I then did was, after I tidied up a little bit, gave them time to rest, I just put my stick in the back and did a swirl, just to see how that would look on the other side. I started off with something quite thick, and I changed to a very thin, not a um, toothpick, because I didn't want to scratch the bottom of my mould, but... Just a little thin metal stick and that um, gave it the swell. Although if you do notice, sometimes it was almost like the alcohol ink was coming off like a skin. It was very weird, but you know, let's see what happens. Oh, dokie, we are back to remove these. Now, let me try and remember. So these were just me dropping in, wasn't it? as it was 
So this was the orange and the blue. Not the greatest of the... Uh, but that's okay. So then we have this purple and yellow one, which is really pretty actually. Oh, it's got some really nice effects on that. So dark because of the purple. Now I'm trying to remember the order I did them in. So this one has got some really nice feathery effects. Oh, this one we've got some white droplets, which wasn't quite what I was aiming for. But I like it. Oh wow. This one's got a huge white droplet. And some interesting sides. Again we have a huge drop of white. But it is very pretty. Oh my god it looks like some sort of... Uh, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it looks like a view of the world. It looks like a little mini. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Okay, and this purpley pink one is interesting. Okay. So, I'm going to put these this way. Over here give myself some space so this one's interesting you can't quite see the swirl so these were the two layers I think wasn't it that's pretty got some nice sort of like feathery effects in that hope this one's pretty because this one is the one that I liked the most from behind is there a problem with the mould? There's damage in the mould, but if you ignore that, that's really pretty. You can kind of see the spiral of mixing. I think I left it too long to mix it. So there's a purple and pinky one. And we've got, got a lot of droppage. They've all stayed quite up the top. I think that's because they're mixed with the white. But that's cool. Oh, there's another one that looks like a, an, an area of the planet. Like a... When you terraform something. Right, I will zoom this in a little bit for you to see. So if I remember correctly, those dropped in with white on top. Those were the mixture and that was just them with nothing in. I have to remind myself, but yeah. These two are my favourites. I do like the others. I kind of want to try this on a um, like a, a bigger mould and see what happens. But these are awesome. Oh, I need to have another play. So let's pour up some resin and have another go in a slightly different mould. Okay, so I did what I said I was going to do. I did a little bit more playing. So the first set that we did, we poured the resin, we put the inks mixed with the white in and we did like the swirl right away. So that was the first lot. You've seen those results. I did a second lot and this time I poured it I poured the inks and I left it half an hour before I did the swirl. And in that I did two round ones, this pot and lid and this coffin and lid. Just to see what it looks like with things where there's a side and everything else. So let's start with this pot. Now the base doesn't look amazing, but we'll see what it looks like from the front. That's the entire point. So if we take this off, 
like so. Okay. So there is the pot. We have a little bit of the texture, but it's more sort of like wavy. It didn't particularly sink. And so it's a very different look, but I still really like it. I think that's very cool. And then the lid, which I did in slightly different colours. Again, I was just playing around. These aren't necessarily going to make a cohesive project. So for the lid, we have got, let me get it in the light for you. I go like that. Hopefully you can kind of see the texture in it. I will put some pictures up as well, obviously. This one has slightly more of the texture. I think a thinner layer gives you that texture more. So that's the first part. Then we did, I did pretty much the same thing with this coffin shaped one again I wanted to see if any of it would go down the sides how it would look etc so this one I did leave a big spill on the outside which was really frustrating there we go so okay, if we pop this out oh now that I really love so there's the back of it move this so you can actually see and then inside Try and hold it so that my fingers aren't in the way behind to disguise it. You get some very, very cool textures. Again, I'll stick a picture up for you, but try and put it across the camera so you can see that texture. That's pretty cool. And on this one, the colours did reach the edge, so from here it looks like the sides are coloured. Where on this one, you only get a couple of spots, so because there was a lot of clear space around the edge. So there's that. Let's look at the top to our coffin box. <gasps> oh yes, that is. Again, let me hold a spot where. Okay, so I'm not going to be in the way. So if I pop that like so, you can see the texture in that. It's just so beautiful. Again, I will pop a picture on for you. That worked beautifully, actually. That is a, we've got a large, rather large air bubble at the end there, but again, this is just me playing around and testing. I like it. Let's have a look. We've got our small little flat one that has broken the, wow. You can tell it's an old mold when it falls apart, just opening it. Oh well. So there we've got some pretty cool texture as well. Right in the middle for you. Again, that's some nice, nice texture. And then we'll do the large one, which doesn't look great from the back, but we'll see. There you go, you can tell this mould isn't as old because it doesn't break. <laughs> okay, and then if we turn this over, interesting. That is nothing like the other texture at all. It's sort of a mix between this sort of wavy one and this kind of, which makes me wonder, is it the colours? Is the blue and purple got more white in, so they are creating that look, and the orange didn't have enough white in, so it's being a bit more spready. Spready, I mean, look at me and my... Right, so that's those. So those were adding it in, leaving it half an hour before I swirled it. I then did a third test. This test, I did another little pot and I did some more of the small circular pieces. And what I did here was I poured the resin, I left the resin for half an hour, then I added the inks and twirled it right away. So the first one was fresh resin, fresh ink, twirl. The second one was fresh resin, fresh ink, white, twirl. This one was fresh resin, white, ink, twirl. So we've got three different options for it. We'll start with this little coffin box. So 
this one you don't really have very much texture at all. Try and get a um I need something white really done so you can see through it, but yeah, that's a good spot. So it hasn't quite got the same texture, which is interesting. But okay, there's the first part. Let's do one of the side panels. This one has kind of got the texture in. If I hold it in a spot where I'm not going to obscure any of the uh, texture. So that's quite interesting. Let's do the other side. So I did kind of have a colour scheme for these, not like 100%, but. So again, there's this one. Put some of the whiteness on it a little bit. So there's that side. Then we'll go with the purple and light blue front. Again, we've got quite a lot of clear space in this. But some really nice texture there. And then the last one is our purple and yellow side. Again, just testing all the different colours and I just cracked that one in half. Which is not great. But thankfully these weren't for a project, these were just me playing. So again, you can kind of see the texture in it. Okay, so those didn't work so well. They didn't really get any of the texture. Let's try these. So I did the yellow, pink, green and blue. Now that does have the texture. That really does have the texture, which is beautiful. Okay, the next one, yeah again we get the same kind of texture, which is really cool. Let's do the purple and pinky one, not a lot of texture in this one but a little bit, try and get it so you can actually see, there we go that one and then just because I love the colours light blue dark blue and the orange it looks a bit like a landmass we did I did two of those just because they were my favourite and again these have turned out beautifully I really love the texture in these yep I will stick up photos I love the texture they look like little atmospheres little planets little maps this one not so much. Again, the orange has, let me hold it this way so you can see a bit better. The orange hasn't really created the texture. The orange is just very clear behind it. So you can, if I put my hands underneath it, you can see through all this clear area here. Um, so I think the orange needs a lot more white. So these were the bottles that I used. And they have a dropper top, and when you shake, you do get a little bit of the liquid comes out of the top into the lid, as you can see. The lid is very full of colour, um, and they are not 100% sealed. So you do lose a little bit. So what I would say is if you're doing a couple of projects, or if you're doing a pour maybe two days in a row where you want to use them, that's fine, but realistically, this won't last much longer than two days because it does start to evaporate. I'm sure there are better bottles you could find to use, maybe get the glass bottles or whatever. I just wanted these ones to test. And to be honest, I'm happy only doing a little amount at a time and leaving the rest in the sealed bottles. So yeah, that's my experiments with playing with adding the white into the resin. I think I'm gonna cap into the resin into the inks. I'm going to carry on playing with these a bit um, because like I did try and do a certain pattern on this one. I wanted to sort of bring the yellow up as if it was flames and we've got a few areas that look like it but it didn't come out how I expected. So I am going to play with this again. If you would like me to do another video on it then we can do that. Um, if you're like, no, I've seen enough of this technique, let's do something new. Also, let me know in the comments. That's absolutely fine. 
but I am going to be playing around with this a bit more to try and get a bit more of a a technique down I guess um, I really want to make some really cool things with this now that I've seen what it can do so I guess the only other thing is let me know in the comments if you do want to see this again let me know in the comments if you have enjoyed this video and which was your favorite was it the first technique the middle technique or the last technique which one do you think turned out the best obviously if you have liked this video please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing on a Tuesday I do paper craft mixed media style projects on a Friday I do resin based projects and then on the first of every other month currently I have my design team for crafters castle challenge blog which by all means go and check that out as well um yeah let me know what you think what I want to try and this is what I'm going to be looking into as well is using this mold with this technique because there is some really cool texture here um so I want to try this technique in these which I didn't do um, so yeah that's what I'm going to be looking into but yeah let me know if you'd like to see any more of this if you want to think about any other molds you'd like to see it in or any other ways I could do it let me know and I will see you all next time keep crafting guys have a great week bye